to get a Bates degree uh, because he had been governor of Massachusetts and had uh, made his fame in the police strike uh, uh, about that time. He is the uh, second from uh, the right here. Uh, this is President uh, Chase, no, President Gray, President Gray, who was being inaugurated as president at the same time uh, uh, that the degrees were being conferred on, on the students. Uh, his governor, Milliken of Maine, uh, and then a, a couple professors here, and uh, military aides to the respective governors, Millik uh, uh, Milliken and uh, Coolidge. They marched right in the, in the procession, apparently, uh, the <laughs> academic procession. Uh, Then we have a couple of vice presidential nominees. Uh, we had uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt as the vice presidential nominee in 1920 uh, on the, with James Cox, I believe, uh, was the presidential nominee. Uh, actually, according to the newspaper, uh, Mrs. Funk, who was uh, another speaker, uh, outshone uh, Roosevelt, with regard to her ability to speak and uh, uh, fire up the crowd. It might have been that they were just had a kind of a, a good cop, bad cop uh, <laughs> uh, function. Uh, he was the above the fray, and uh, she was the one who really uh, would stick it to the Harding uh, ticket. Uh, and she was quite, uh, quite uh, critical of the ticket. Uh, Nixon came in 52 as the vice presidential nominee campaigning on behalf of the ticket. Uh, he spoke at uh, the Kiwanis meeting at the Auburn YMCA, y YMCA uh, and also then went to Lewiston to uh, the Main State Fair uh, and met my grandfather, who was the, in charge of the exhibition hall there. Uh, and so there's a little bit of family history there. Uh, moving right along, John Kennedy, City Park, 1960. That's what everyone talked to me about when I said what I was working on in terms of this book. Uh, oh, I remember that I went to the uh, to the city park to hear, uh, uh, he was not president then. He was a party nominee, he was a party nominee for president, but it was the weekend just before the election. Uh, and there was a very large crowd, apparently 14,000 people, according to the newspaper, came to the uh, park for the scheduled 9 p.m appearance. Mm -hmm. However, Kennedy was held up in uh, New Jersey uh, and came late and came to the uh, Lewis, Auburn Lewiston Airport uh, and then came to the city park and uh, by that time uh, only about uh, 8,000 people stayed. But still, that's a large number of people. And it was very cold. It was a very cold November night. Uh, and. Uh, now, of course, the park is called Kennedy Park. Uh, it was deemed appropriate uh, because he was there, uh, the city council, uh, after the assassination, uh, decided to name the park. And uh, as I am, I and Jack Milo are campaigning to save the gazebo or the, the bandstand, uh, we always mention that. And it, this is where Kennedy came, and it's called Kennedy Park, and we have to keep the gazebo, keep the bandstand. So uh, it, it was a fairly brief speech. Uh, the local uh, politicians uh, had to keep the crowd entertained for the three hours, and so uh, Senator Muskie and others uh, were. Uh, put to the test in terms of uh, trying to uh, entertain people uh, at that event. Uh, 
And then finally, we have candidates who became president who were contesting the caucuses. Uh, and uh, uh, Jimmy Carter in 76 uh, spoke to a large crowd at Bates College. Uh, and uh, Clinton came to uh, a dinner. Was it the Jefferson Jackson Day? So it was a dinner just before the caucuses. Uh, and uh, the newspaper didn't cover this very much. And basically what you got with regard to Clinton's visit was that uh, he was at the dinner. Uh, he, he bowled a couple uh, rounds uh, and at the spare time <coughs> recreation uh, out in the, uh, the uh, Wallace Way Fairgrounds, uh, and the, the newspaper focused on how he uh, let the ball go, and, and there was one pin that there was uh, wobbling about, and it fell. <laughs> uh, but but the focus was uh, we don't know what the, how the caucus is going to come out, and uh, I think he actually finished third in the caucus uh, in that particular. Year in Lewis. Uh, okay, past presidents. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt uh, came in uh, uh, 1914 to campaign for the progressives. He was still a progressive, uh, but in 1916 he was a Republican and supported uh, Charles Edward Hughes uh, for president uh, and was campaigning on his behalf. Uh, Bush uh, was campaigning for his son in 2000. Bill Clinton <coughs> was campaigning for uh, the, the ticket, primarily Libby Mitchell and the two co congressional candidates uh, in 2010. Uh, at least those are the ones who are mentioned in the paper. Uh, Jimmy Carter got a Bates degree at the dedication of the Muskie Archives, and that was the occasion for his coming. Uh, he got an honorary degree at the, that point, and uh, because uh, Muskie had been his Secretary of State, and uh, so Bates was bold enough to invite uh, uh, the former president to come. Uh, I focus, I mention, however, Another candidate, another former president, Herbert Hoover, uh, who came, and here again, he came as a quick for a quick visit, almost like Taft. Uh, he uh, came uh, from Portland with Senator Wallace H. White, uh, who was a U.S. Senator from Lewiston uh, and a son-in-law, I think, of Senator Fry. Uh, anyway, he was related to Senator Fry. Uh, and uh, but but what? But Hoover was on his way to Colby College uh, to give the Lovejoy uh, lecture. Uh, concerning freedom of the press. Uh, and so he, on the way from Portland, he stopped at Shaker Village, and then he went to the Whites' home. Oh, White apparently had uh, moved to Auburn, because he went to the Whites' home on Elm Street, right across from the WLLU, WL uh, and uh, stayed there for just a few minutes, just kind of maybe to go to the bathroom and to get a little refreshment. But then they took him off because uh, uh, he had to go, go, go to Colby for a lecture, and it was going to be uh, broadcast live, uh, and so he had to make that. He's not in the book. Uh, I missed him. Uh, many of these are ephemeral kinds of visits. They're just in and out. Uh, and uh, he's not here tonight, but Stan Diorsi, Stan Diorsi, uh, when this was uh, announced, had been on eBay and he saw a picture of Hoover 
actually, it was without the women, it was just this picture. I think it, I'm very certain it was this picture, but the women were cropped out. Uh, and they were selling it on eBay. And he said, sis, they were from Auburn. But what gives? It, it, this Hoover was not listed in the newspaper article. Uh, and so I checked, and sure enough, he, he did come for that brief visit. Uh, these are Mrs. White, uh, Senator White's, and uh, Mrs. White's mother. Uh, okay, if you know of any other visitors, <laughs> uh, know of any other visitors, please do let me know. Maybe there will be a second edition someday. Yes, uh, Larry. <laughs> Jerry Brown, the current governor of uh, California, came uh, as a candidate <coughs> for president of yes. Yes. for his party's nomination. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I, he came, there were at least two elections in which he came to Maine and to yeah. Lewiston, Lewiston, Auburn, whatever. Uh, so it was two separate events. I think it was more than, the, than two visits. Yeah. It was several times in each year. Uh, he he was using the uh, taking the caucus strategy to some extent and trying to get momentum by winning some caucuses and then hope to uh, do better in other states. So yes. Oh, I'll I'll give you a whole list of candidates uh, shortly, and then if you know of any others. Uh, okay, major party nominees. We've already talked about John Kennedy. Uh, James G. Blaine from Maine was uh, really our first uh, one who's in, in the book. Uh, but he, I, I love the fact that he was, uh, there was this rally in Lewiston City Park. Uh, he introduced the stump speaker saying, I have the luxury this year of hearing speeches and not making them. <laughs> this is, you don't campaign for the office. And then he introduced the stump speaker, and he s spoke a total of 80 words, and then sat down, and the stump speaker then extolled the <laughs> virtues of uh, the candidate. Uh, and then uh, after Blaine had left, uh, there was a torchlight parade in the evening, uh, where uh, the uh, party, party regulars, the people who worked for the party, uh, and any others who wanted to, would uh, go with torchlight uh, uh, down the street, wearing s slickers of some kind because they would drip and, and the like, um, and the people would illuminate their houses. Uh, as, in, as part of the parade, uh, in essence. So it's, it was very interesting to see the kinds of things that they did. Um, Charles Evans Hughes, in 1916, he uh, uh, was accompanied by Aram Pothier of uh, Rhode Island. He was a hero of the uh, French community. Uh, he was a governor of, uh, who came. Uh, after a speech uh, at City Hall, uh, the, uh, the Hughes, it was Mrs. Hughes also came. Uh, they then went into the DeWitt Hotel across from Lewis to City Hall and uh, had, a, went, had a receiving line there. I need to rush a little long, long here. Um, Michael Tukarkas came in 1988. Uh, it was Parents Weekend, uh, so that there were many voters from throughout New England uh, here. So this was deemed uh, a nice place to uh, visit. Uh, his brother and mother went to Bates. And uh, they. this is another reason to come to Bates, uh, because um, uh, this gave him a chance to speak about his family to try to offset the uh, reputation for coldness uh, that he uh, had. 